Okay, you might remember that when we started the quarter, we talked about this notion of states. And um, I wanted to come back to this because this is starting to be an important distinction when we look at heat transfer problems. And I want to call your attention to essentially three states. This state right here represents what I would call the equilibrium state. This state is what I would call a steady state. And this state right here is what I would call a transient state. So um, in an equilibrium, you might imagine that um, in equilibrium, there is actually no transfer um, of heat. In a steady state, you might imagine the rate of transfer is constant for time. In a transient state, the picture that you would see is basically it's changing with time and really going to zero eventually. But in equilibrium, we would just basically call this zero, the rate of transfer. So it's really, well, in order to solve heat transfer problems, it's kind of important to be able to d differentiate these three different states because these three different states essentially define how you approach the problem. And basically, the way the problem is worded will give you clues as to which situation is happening. Is it equilibrium? Is it uh, steady? Or is it transient state? So let's you know put this into practice. OK, we have here um, a situation we have hot air and they give you an average temperature of 100 degrees C and that it flows through a three meter long tube it gives you the inside di diameter and then it says the temperature of the tube is 20 degrees C along its entire length. The convective film coefficient is this value and it asks you to determine the rate of convective heat transfer from air to the tube. So um, there's a number of clues in this problem, and I'll, I'll say f for myself, what I often do is I start out with a sketch just to kind of get my mind around what's happening in the problem. So they tell you that there's a three meter long tube. And that tube is, um, hang on a sec. I want a thicker pen here. Hmm. Okay, so they tell you that the tube is three meters long. This is not to scale. And that the diameter is uh, 60 millimeters. Um, it also tells you that this air flows through the tube and the air has a temperature of 100 degrees C. It says the temperature of the tube is 20 degrees C along its entire length. Now, um, not clear, not clear if they're saying that the temperature of the tube, uh, whether it's the inside or the outside, they, they don't really say, but the temperature here is 20 degrees C. And what they're asking about is the convective heat transfer from air to the tube. Okay, so the idea is that this fluid is transferring all along the length of the tube heat to the tube, and um, it's doing that by convection. We know that H is equal to, it's given 20.1 watts per meter squared Kelvin. Okay, so they're asking essentially for you to determine what the 
this value is here. We know from our work that uh, the, the convective heat transfer is equal to A times H times T minus T infinity. Now, in this problem, it's not clear to me. I guess one of the clues is that it's 20 degrees C along its entire length. They don't tell you if it's the inside of the tube or the outside of the tube. They just say of the tube. So what we can assume there is that the tube has a, um, the tube is highly conductive. And since they tell you it's just the temperature of the tube, so um, in other words, it has the K, K is large, and the temperature is consistent throughout. So on the inside, the outside, it doesn't matter. And so we can, in this problem, we're trying to figure out, since this is 100 degrees C and the tube is 20 degrees C, we know that the heat is transferred actually to the tube. And so in our problem, we know that this T infinity is essentially the 20 degrees C. And that this T is the 100 degrees C. So we know this is a steady state heat transfer rate because, um, well, it's obviously not equilibrium because there's a temperature difference. But they tell you that it's 20 degrees C along the whole length of the thing so that that fixed temperature gives you a clue that it's steady state. They also tell you that it's 100 degrees C, um, the, the, the average temperature. So essentially it's fixing the temperature, this T and this T, at these two, these two different values. So that's how you know that it is a steady state situation. So let's go ahead and, and solve this just for kicks. Um, it's kind of messy here. I don't have room to write. Um, let me let me um, get rid of this. These guys over here. So we'll uh, take our equations that we know. Q is equal to a h t minus t infinity, and in this case we have twenty degrees C here. We have one hundred degrees C here. And we know this H is 20.1 watts per meter squared Kelvin. So the Q is equal to the area. And in the case of the tube, we know that the area, if we were to say cut this tube open, and we know that the heat transfer is to the wall. So the area in this case, it would just be 2 pi r, the circumference, times the length. Uh, so these values are, we know this length is 3 meters, and the, the radius is 60 millimeters, or 60 times 10 to the 60 millimeters. So 60 times 10 to the minus 3, so that's 2, 2 pi times 60 times 10 to the minus 3 meters times 3 meters, giving us an area of essentially the distance on 20.12 pi times 3, this is 0.36 pi meters squared. So what I did was I took this out, I went 1, 2, uh, 3. Uh, I, I knew 2 times 60 is 120, times 3 is 360, so 1, 2, 3, 0.360 pi. This is my area, and so we have 0 0.36 pi. A third of pi, this is like, pi is like 3, so a third is like 1. That's like going to be 1 times 20.1 watts per meter squared Kelvin times 100 degrees C minus 20 degrees C, and we know that 1 degree C is 1 Kelvin. So our units cancel, Kelvin degree C, meter squared, I forgot that. So this is about, I'm just going to guess in these values, this is about 1 20 times 20, this is about 80. 80 times 20 is, what is that? Um, 160, 1,600, something like that. 8 times, no, is that right? 20, 8, 160 times 2, 2 times 8 is, is, 8 times 2 is 16, times 10 times 10, 160, I'm a little bit tired here, so 160, about 160 watts, that's going to be Q. Now what are our options? This, I'm just doing this in my head, but I'm just trying to see if I'm in the, oops, if I'm in the zone of our answers. Let's bring this over here, what are our options? These are our options, there's no 160, but if we, there is this one, this is pretty close right here. Let's see what we get when we use a, a calculator. Wow, I'm pretty far off there. I would guess it's this one, D, but I'm 100, that 160 is kind of far off. 
Okay, I'm going to a calculator and hoping I'm remembering these, what I wanted to do here. Um, so we had 0.36, oops, 0.36 pi times 20.1 um, times 100 minus 20, which is 80. Whoa, that was closer. Maybe I did my math wrong. Let's go back here. Convective heat transfer. Hmm. Okay, I think I did the, what I did wrong here was the area. <laughs> two pi r times the length. Two, the, two pi is equal to the two r is 2r is the diameter so diameter pi times the length it's 60 millimeters times 3 meters or times pi 180 uh, times 10 to the minus 3 pi equals 0 0.18 pi so ha ha so this is more like you know 0 0.5 not 1 which is what i thought so half of this is around 800 we have 900 here and then 850, so we better turn to a calculator and make sure we do this right. So right now we have um, 0 0.18 pi times 80 times 20.1, and that should give us uh, watts. Let's see what we get when we use the calculator. Clear. Uh, 0.18 pi times 20.1 times what else? Times 80 equals 909. Let's go back here. What were our options? 910 watts, the winner. This is it. Our answer is C.